A very good morning to all of you. This is the first day of Bengali New Year. I wish you all to be blessed with a happy and prosperous new year ahead. You may ask, ma'am, what is good about this year? What is good about it, about this morning rather? Let me tell you, there is nothing good or bad in its true sense. Actually, we can make a barren and gloomy day into a magnificent one with our positive outlook to handle that. So, right now, we may be surrounded with mountains with darkness, but there may be a path lying up the mountain we cannot be seen staying at the valley. But that will surely be discovered and we will have our happy school days back very soon. We haven't met you previously. Uh, yes, this is our first digital class. And let me introduce myself. This is Upama Dash, your English 2 teacher. And today I am going to teach you Birches by Robert Frost. Robert Frost was one of the America's most popular 20th century poets. He was born in the year 1874 in San Francisco. He was awarded with four Pulitzer Prizes for his contribution in literature. He served as a poetry consultant to the Library of Congress. He often wrote about the challenges of New Englanders in nature. He is considered a literary treasure for his consistent style and depth of poetic work. Burches is one of the most widely read poems by Robert Frost. It consists of 59 lines of blank verse with no stanza breaks. It is originally called Swinging Birches. It tells us about the complex reality of life in a very simple manner. It is a complex blend of imagination, pragmatism and realism. At the same time, it is also telling us how to stay in the real world, how to face the hardship, the harsh reality of life, at the same time enjoying the bliss of a world of fantasy. When I see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, please underline straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy has been swinging them, but swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as I storms do. You please underline swinging. Twice it has been used there. So the poem begins with a beautiful imagery that is bent left and right. The tree is tall and erect and beyond its rows, the branches are bent from left to right. Now that is causing the poet's uh, thinking like why? Why the branches are bent like that? First of all, he started thinking uh, this is definitely uh, caused by the naughty boys swinging on the birches. At the same time, he also thinks no, they cannot do such damage to the tree. The actual reason of the permanent damage that caused to the tree is by the ice storm, the harsh ice storm. I asked you to underline straighter darker trees. So this is the background. The white birch tree is standing against the darker straighter trees. So there is a symbol which signifies uh, the you know the meaning beyond the literary lines here. By this white birch tree, the poet wants to mean the heavenly bliss and the straighter darker trees that is the background that is nothing but the harsh reality of life and swinging the word has been used twice here as the poet is a believer uh, of childhood he wants to belong to his childhood he doesn't want to doesn't want to come back and in spite of being in the real situation he couldn't help seeing them loaded with ice a sunny winter morning after a rain. They click upon themselves, please underline, they click upon themselves as the breeze rises and turn many colored as the star cracks 
and crazes their enamel. Cracks means breaking into pieces. Crazes that doesn't last long. And enamel out of shiny part. Soon the sun's warmth makes them shade crystal cells. Crystal, the crystal cells that is again, you know, uh, broken into pieces. Shattering and avalanching on the snow crust. Avalanching means sliding like a snowfall. Such heaps of broken glass. Such heaps of broken glass please underline to sweep away. Let us begin with the explanation. This is a beautiful imagery of the birch tree and its branches. After the ice storm in the morning, the branches are encrusted and frozen with ice. But the beauty of this uh, coated trees with ice will, 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 will not be uh, there permanently because when in the morning the sun rises with its heat, you know, it will cause the cracks there. Okay. And after the, after the, you know, crack, those pieces, those pieces of ice will fall down and they will be piled on the ground as if someone will come and that those will be sweeping away by that man. Now here you can see there is another uh, figure of speech that is used here the broken glass pieces okay the broken eyes the shattering crystals are compared to the broken glass pieces here that is called metaphor as i have written here metaphor what is metaphor metaphor is a literary figure of speech where the comparison is made between two analyzed objects why the eyes is here uh, being compared to the glass because of its sharpness and transparency. Another uh, thing I asked you to underline that is they click upon themselves. They click upon themselves. Here you will find another figure of speech that is onomatopoeia. As I have written here, onomatopoeia. What do you mean by this? This is a figure of speech where the sound is causing the sense. Okay, so here you can see in the morning after the branches are getting cracked that click the sharpness of the sound that is causing destruction. Okay, that is actually asking the poet to feel the reality. In a dome of heaven had fallen. They are dragged to the withered bracken by the load. Dragged means moved partly touching the ground and bracken that is fawn, a large fawn stem. And they see not to break, though once they are bored. So low for long, they never ride themselves. You may see their trunks arching in the woods. Years afterwards, trailing their leaves on the ground, trailing their leaves on the ground, you please underline. Like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair, like girls and hands, please underline, before them over their heads to dry in the sun. But I was going to say when truth broke in. Now, the speaker then imagines the ice crystals surrounded over the birch trees is looking like the inner dome of heaven had fallen. Now here, here you will see the sense of retreat begins. Okay, the birch tree with the load of snow, with the load of frost, it has bowed up. Okay, towards the shrub, towards the fawn trees. Okay, and the inner dome means what? Inner dome means the poet is retreating. He wants to go back to his childhood. The, the sense here begins and, uh, and they seem not to break though once they are bored. Now they have bowed down but they are not getting broken. So many they are trunk arching in the woods year afterwards trailing their leaves on the ground. Trailing their leaves on the ground here you can see it is a figure of speech called personification. Trailing their leaves now hanging downwards. Trailing means hanging downwards. There, there is something that is generally attached to living beings. Now, it is attached here with the phone, with the, sorry, birch tree. 
like girls on hands and knees that throw their hair like with the word like we can easily understand this is another figure of speech called simile okay so when the branches of the birch tree are bowed down it is compared to the girls who has uh, you know who has keep who has kept their hair in front of them in order to make them dry in the sunlight so these two imageries are quite similar according to the poet now by this simile we can see it is it is actually bringing out the delicacy and vulnerability i should prefer to have some boy bend them as he went out and in to fetch the cows some boy too far from town to learn baseball whose only play was that he found himself summer or winter and could play alone here you can see the poet discards the idea that the ice storms have in the ice storms have done all the damage to the tree he is saying that the boy the boy who is living far from this urban life he has done this by the word prefer you can see the poet he deliberately actually discarding all the limitations of real life okay rather he is acknowledging uh, the imagination the, the imaginary world in order to roam in order to roam in his you know in in his in his world of fantasy he is doing it deliberately and that is why he is actually creating this figure of the boy who lives far away who doesn't know how to play baseball who has no no friends now he is the one and only companion of nature one by one he subdued his father's trees by riding them down over and over again subdued means controlled until he took the stiffness out of them and not one but hung limb not no not one was left for him to conquer he learned all there was to learn about not launching out too soon launching means realizing and so not carrying the tree away clear to the ground in these lines actually the poet returns to the theme of conquest of nature he is completely clear about the fact that that boy the boy did everything okay he is subduing the stiffness of the tree i mean he is controlling he is taking away the stiffness of the tree by climbing them by climbing those trees okay until he reaches the top and you can see here like this is nothing but the victory of the poetic imagination over the world of reality here the poet wins and he is very much proper and distinct that no ice storms no ice storms did anything but it was the boy who did everything he always kept his poise to the top branches poise means balance climbing carefully with the same pains you used to fill a cup up to the brim brim means the top edge of the glass and even above the brim then he flounces outward feet first with a swish now swish it's a quick movement through the air that makes soft sound so he kicking his way down through the air to the ground now this is through these lines the poet actually explains um, the technique the technique the boy is applying in order to reach the top of the tree he is taking much pain he is taking much pain to reach there and it is quite similar uh, to the efforts that we take in order to fill the cup up to its brim or sometimes above the brim now above the brim means beyond limits the boy is allowing himself to enjoy the ecstasy being in the in the being beyond the limit okay now the this are this is completely metaphorical image metaphor as i already explained the comparison is made between two unallied object here the tree and the cup here it is told by this lines and now 
Then what, what did he do? He then takes off his feet and he is just holding the branches until he is being bent down as if he is going to touch the fern and the ground. Okay. Now what is this? By this line, the poet actually tells us after having a flight of imagination, you have to come back to the realm of reality because it is the ultimate truth of life. No one can belong to the imaginary world all the time. It is just an inspiration that being, the, being in the imaginary world, you can have, you can be inspired, you can be influenced so that you can come back and you can face everything with the same zeal. That so, was I once myself a swinger of watches and so I dream of going back to be. The line starts with the sense of nostalgia. The poet once was a swinger of birches and now he, he is dreaming of going back. It's when I'm wary of considerations. Now he is tired of making thoughtful decisions and life is too much like pathless soot. Now the life is being compared here with a forest which has no such you know path no such marked path that that this path will lead to this that path will lead to that no no such marked path is seen where your face burns and tickles with the cobweb broken across it and one eye is whipping from a twig having lashed across it open now the poet is talking about the you know the harsh realities being in the adulthood is the most painful time of your life so he the cobweb what do you mean by cobweb web that is made by spiders he's been tickled he's been irritated with all the pain of adulthood and he wants to go back to his childhood at any cost so you can see the the you know the imagery of um, that imagination and real world this is very significant here i'd like to get away from art a while and then come back to it and begin over may no fate willfully misunderstand me and half grant what I wish and snatch me away, not to return. Ask the right place for love. I don't know where it's likely to go better. Now here the speaker wishes to escape into an imaginary world. But he doesn't want to be there for all the time. He doesn't want to be there permanently. He wants to come back because he thinks that this real world is a ultimate place you know to have love it is producing all the realities and that is the you know that is something that we cannot escape the ultimate truth of life you can hover over the world of imagination that is up to you but you have to come back because there is no such world which will offer you love so he he loves to take all the pain but yes he wants to be rejuvenated so that he can come back and he can uh, he can have access to all those pain all those problems that he was dealing earlier now here you will see that uh, only the real world is existent and only due to that we are we are fantasizing to be in the imaginary world climbing a birch tree and climb back branches up a snow white trunk toward heaven till the tree could bear no more but dipped its top and set me down again dip means from top to the ground when would be good both going and coming back one could do worse than be a swinger of birches now the speaker wishes to climb a birch tree in order to go towards heaven but it, yes the tree is an opportunity here that you can uh, you can get away from earth but here he is not meaning the word death by escaping his real world he wants to go to heaven it's not like that 
he wants to go to heaven he wants to feel the bliss of nature he wants to be blessed with his innocence once again so that he can get rejuvenated and he can come back and face the real world again and the last line you can see like one could do uh, one could do worse than be a swinger of birches now it is causing the darker possibility that is one could certainly do worse but by not trying but by not attempting and yes the earthly existence can be solitude but it is an existence so you cannot deny this is something that is this is something very much truth about life so you cannot escape there can be uh, you know a conflict that may take place in your mind that is between uh, the real world and the imaginary world both the worlds have its own importance its own elegance but both the worlds are very important you cannot escape one to be in another completely so that is the essence of the poem uh, borges now let us discuss about the themes there are three important themes that is imagination versus real world yes we have seen there, there is a conflict that took place in the mind of the poet like uh, yes there is an imaginary world and there is a real world both the world have his own own importance its own elegance so both the worlds are equally important to the poet uh, second is the need for limits yes the need for limits that is very much significant because this is very much needed without the limits we cannot enjoy the boundaries because bound setting boundaries is not all the time very monotonous not all the time it's, it should be called boundary and boundaries can can be good but for now it is even see due to this covid 19 we are unable to go out we are unable to go out we are locked down at our homes so that is done for our good so that we can live a healthy life so this limitations boundaries are very much real it should be there okay so that you can have uh, you can enjoy your own existence as a human being third is nature it, it is very much significant that in frost's poetry nature is very evident it seems like he he seems to have an affinity with nature and nature is everywhere present uh, nature is means the role of nature is so much important that it is rejuvenating the poet so that he is able to enjoy he is able to uh, you know have the pressure of real life nature is always rejuvenating so the importance of nature in our lives it is indispensable we cannot we cannot even deny this next is certain figure of speech is uh, figures of speech is are used here they are metaphor i already explained onomatopoeia i already explained simile yes that is also explained here personification i explained repetition and symbolism these are the thing i have explained and now the style the this is the narrative poem what do you mean by narrative poem where a story is told where it it, it looks like a prose not a poetry so yes through this um, poem we can understand there is there is a tale of his childhood there is a tale of the boy who used to uh, climb the tree who is uh, doing all the damages to the tree everything and that is written in a lucid manner and in a story type manner that is called a narrative poem and second is a form it is it has no such form here with no stanza divisions it consists of 59 lines and it's a blank verse okay so all this i have explained hopefully this video was helpful to all of you if any question any query is there so you can write that in the comment section i'll try to answer those uh, so till then take care of yourself do study well whatever i taught today it's very important go line by line read the thara text this is very much important okay after reading if you find any problem please do write that i'll try to answer those and take care of yourself be safe be happy and stay at home thank you